Hi all, welcome to Dwiti Technologies, myself Shankar and in this new launch of Kubernetes series, we will be learning all the things which are very much essential in order to work in the real-time industry of production scale level. So let us not waste any more time and just dive to the topics. In this video and one more thing guys, in this video we will be learning only the things like in the coming sessions what are all the things that we will be discussing down the line only the topics would be listed down here else not anything technical stuff would be included in this video i just want to make sure that what are, what is the curriculum and what, I, I just want to give a overall glance overall view for you what what are all the topics that we will be covering okay so i'm just showing the things now the topics which i'll be covering So initially we'll be covering initially we'll be covering like architecture. We'll be starting from the scratch, guys. Everything will be starting from the scratch and we'll be moving into advanced mode. So basically we'll be starting from the architecture and what are all the components that it is a master and slave architecture type. Okay, so what are all the components that master consists of and what are all the components that node would be consisting of we'll be seeing in detail. So because if you don't understand the architecture, if something goes wrong in and around, you will be not able to identify and fix that issue. Is that a network problem or any other problem? So architecture idea is, is very important in order to troubleshoot any sort of problem which comes in future. So we'll be starting from the architecture and once we have once once if we understand the architecture we'll be going through the pods and deployments all the things replica sets replication controller so everything would what we'd be doing is everything in the kubernetes will be giving the input to api server of master like and that master like and that master would be sending the things to node and in node like cube kubelet would be responsible okay they will be getting the input from the scheduler to the kubelet in the node. So that's a different story we'll be covering in detail. So we'll be starting from this how to write a YAML and how to write YAMLs for all the resources which are available in the Kubernetes. So we'll be just understanding the pod specifications and then we'll be moving to replication controller and replica set and then we'll be going to de deployments and in the deployment strategies we'll be understanding what are all the strategies and deployment versioning like blue, green, canary, recreate. These are all some of the strategies. Okay. And rolling updates and rolling history like deployment versioning will be going. And further to that, we'll be understanding the services. Like if you want to expose your application to outside world, you need to have a service. Or else what your business would be going down everything you can't do anything you will be all of you all of us will be developing an application in order to expose all of our application and customers would be using if you don't have service how your customer would be able to access your application that's meaningless right so what are all the types of services we had like cluster ip headless node port and load balancer these were all the services which are available in the kubernetes which helps us to expose our application to outside world we'll be having a cluster ip which which is useful to access in internal purpose itself and node port and load balancer these were all the services which are used to expose even outside okay and this node port would be having a range all this okay fine fine we'll be discussing everything and uh, I'm not going too much into depth. I'm just telling like what are all the services available, what does service do and topics like what we'll be covering and we'll be having services. We need to write a service of uh, services of a uh, node port or load balancer and each service for each load balancer. We need to write one of the services and that becomes very costly. So we'll be moving to ingress controllers. What this ingress controller do is one one load balancer would be enough in order to provision in order to expose all of our application using path based path based routing and host based uh, host based route routing so one load balancer would be enough for multiple services in order to uh, 
uh, in order to access our application okay and further we'll be moving to security at last we'll be coming into security not a problem okay just just a minute we'll be understanding cluster maintenance annotations like cluster maintenance what are all the things we you know we will be doing in order to maintain high availability for our master and node because everything would be stored in the master itself guys everything would be stored in etcd component in your master so if once the etcd and everything is down you will be not able to connect to your master uh, existing pods and existing resources would be working fine but in order if you want to provision new things into your cluster or if you want to make some of the modifications to your cluster you can't do because your etcd component would be down if your master is down so we we'll, we need we will be doing the best practices in order to maintain our cluster with high availability and fault tolerance and odd multiple api services okay if your master goes down and if your node goes down and next comes the limit uh, limit ranges resource quota so how much of uh, memory and how much of cpu you want to give to your pod like uh, one uh, one cpu or like we will be giving we will be making and we'll be writing some of the things what we required how much of cpu we required in order to uh, for for particular pod of uh, so and so that that comes under limit ranges and next we'll be telling like cluster cluster provision and troubleshooting like there are two types of things guys self managed cluster and will be cloud managed cluster so when we come into self managed server uh, cluster you need to install some of the components you need to do it all from your scratch and you need to maintain and if any infra in infra fails like your master or something goes down uh, something like infra if your mission goes down anything goes down you need to check your network components like flannel and calico and weave networks all these things if even some of the things troubleshooting everything you need to do like load balancer you need to main you need to have some of the hk proxies in nginx all these things you need to install and you need to attach to your load balancer if it is something like self managed cluster directly you can't make like load balancer is in uh, like maintaining all of your load balancer you can't do if it is a self managed service and the provisioning methods you can use terraform ansible directly you can even use a shell script in order to provision directly your cluster and then comes cloud managed service like all the cloud vendors would be having kubernetes as a service which makes you which makes very easy all of your cluster like up and running to up and run all of your cluster this all cl cloud providers providing like each cloud provider would be providing a service of its own like aws provides eks service for L it, which is elastic kubernetes service which is helpful in order to run all of your cluster you just need to give some of the input parameters in order to make your cluster up and running and azure provides aks azure, uh, azure kubernetes service which is also very easy and google provides google kubernetes engine and by the way kubernetes is developed by google itself guys and uh, these were all the kubernetes uh, cloud managed uh, cloud managed kubernetes service cloud managed services which makes the practices easy and next comes the liveness and readiness probes so whenever your pods are getting getting which uh, getting run in, inside your node it if you run some of your pods which has some of the prerequisite like this has to be started first if you have installed any of your application and if that application needs to be started first so it takes some of the time guys even if you provision a pod your pod might be inside your pod your container might be running but that's a different story your application would not be started initially it takes some of the time so for that we'll be setting some of the limits have as liveness and readiness probes which helps all of all of us immediately it won't be turning up it takes some of the time and then it gets started because that is the mandatory thing before like 
if you have some java installed if you have some of your applications which are installed and if that application needs some of the time in order to start initially you will be setting that time here in the liveness and readiness probes after that time your application get it to after that particular time so that your application needs to be start, started so that's how you will be setting liveness and readiness and next comes the storage part guys so once if your pod once your application or once your pod is down the secure data what are all the data that you are maintaining till up to the point would be getting would be lost so in order to in order to secure all of your data which you have already previously which you have previously inside your nodes and master you will be doing you will be having some of the things like non persistent storage and storage you will be having some of the things like pv and pvcs and dynamic volumes and storage classes this empty data and host paths so these were all the components these were all some of the resources that you will be using in order to secure your data even your pod gets died so when whenever one uh, using your replication controller or replica set or deployment whenever new pod comes and that new pod would be attached to with this volume even uh, so that your uh, your application has the uh, existing data and next that's how we'll be using the storage part guys and next come the networking part all these things so how the networking works and everything we'll be seeing and next comes the logging and monitoring how your application logs are getting how to have your application logs cluster logs to be stored and check and how to check all of this log things we'll be seeing and parameter injection if whenever your application need some of the parameters in order to uh, work exactly you will be using config maps and if if it is that very sensitive you will be using secrets if one container needs to be uh, have that that uh, particular other container parameters to talk like we will be giving some of the parameters for uh, for this container and this container so the com config maps are nothing but the parameters which you will be using to work your application okay and security like r bags role bindings roles and cluster roles and name spaces and accessing cluster and pod security policies all this were comes under security we'll be discussing in detail okay and services part is over right services and helm charts which is a package manager will be not will be uh, writing one chart uh, chart kind of format where everything would be included deployments everything okay which is a package kind of thing like how your app and how your uh, which is a package manager in your linux machines and m is a package manager right if it is windows chocolate how you are using this package in a similar way helm charts will be using okay and daemon sets we did not write so daemon set is nothing but when you want to run all of the components inside your pod of each node you will be using daemon set daemon sets right okay so when whenever you want like log monitoring agents that has to be in, installed in each and every pod of every node you will be using the daemon sets okay and uh, ingress controllers and annotations labeled like advanced scheduling tains and tolerations node selectors node affinity pod affinity annotations and labels so if you want some particular pod to be running inside only one node you can specify that even so that's where this advanced scheduling would be coming schedule your particular pod in of one particular node and kubernetes integration we will be seeing we will be integrating jenkins you will be integrating prometheus and grafana and log collection using efk all these things we will be seeing guys okay so everything will be starting from the scratch and we will be moving slowly to advanced level this course would not be uh, running in a very fast mode we will be covering every topic taking each and every component and we will be doing all of the practical things practical slabs okay so that's all I had for the day guys. If you have any questions or queries, shoot it out over the comment section and we'll be happy to help you and assist you.
Okay. Thank you guys. Let's meet up in the next session.